The numbers are enormous in this. 22,000 people ordered to leave the capital city of Yellowknife by road was the initial ask or by air if unable. The people of the city have until noon tomorrow to get out because the fires are getting ever closer to the city. Let's bring you the very latest from Yellowknife. The mayor is with me now, Rebecca Alte. Mayor Alte, I thank you for your time tonight at a crisis situation. Welcome to Power and Politics. Let me ask you first of all, how are you doing tonight? Just hold on for just one moment, Mayor. I apologize. I'm not able to hear you. I think, uh, oh, there we are. You're yeah. back with me. All yes. right. So I, I, I'll just begin exactly what I was saying. I'm thinking of you with all of this going. You were listening in as I was speaking to Minister Blair. How are you doing really in the thick of things of this fight tonight? I was going to say, and I didn't unmute myself, and I was going to say good morning. So um, it's it's been a long day. Uh, we've got a number of hours still ahead of us, but um, it's good. Folks have been um, evacuating. We see long lineups of vehicles, but, uh, you know, that's good to see. We've got folks leaving by road. Also, a lot of folks um, leaving by plane, both the, the commercial earlier this morning, um, as well as the, the evacuation flights that have been organized. So... Still a lot of work to go. Uh, that's on the evacuation side. And then on the uh, the defensive firefighting side, crews are out there again working hard to, to create the fire breaks, to really slow that fire down and minimize any damage it may have if it reaches the community. Okay. I'll come back to the... Um situation on the fire in just a second, but you raised the evacuation, so let's go there so far. So far, any idea of the percentage of people who have left the city to this point? We we don't have a number yet. Um, do encourage residents to to log into the evacuation registration portal. Um, it is kind of challenging to get a number when folks are just driving out, but we are encouraging folks, you know, get in the vehicle, head out on the highway when it's safe to do so, check into the registration portal. Um, we'll have a better idea with the number of folks going out on flights, but um, right now we, we don't have that number. Okay. As far as the flight out, we saw long lines of people who were going to get on that first afternoon flight. Uh, have you heard of any significant issues there, or does that seem to be their number scheduled for today? Does that seem to be progressing as you'd hoped? Yeah, I uh, just came off a call with uh, Minister Thompson, who's the, the Minister of Emergency Management, and um, that was the one thing I was was flagging. And, um, you know, they, they do have to register everybody, but it is... Um, once the registration is done, flights are coming and, and folks are getting on and looking about adding more flights. So uh, need to speed up that registration process. I'd say that's um, a bit of a, a kink in the system right now. But once that's once that's cleared, folks are on the flight and, and keep going. So. I'll be following up with, I think, Minister Blair after uh, hearing his comments. Well, I was going to ask you that. You were listening in as I was conversing with him, and obviously I ask a number of questions trying to get a little bit more concrete detail on any sort of military airlift assistance that he was, I didn't know if there'd be a promise. Have you had any further discussions? Do you think something like that with the aircraft that is on standby close at hand in Yellowknife or nearby in Edmonton? Have you heard anything concretely in terms of a military assistance? Um, the military is assisting, I would say, to, to do a, a, the broad statement. You know, they have been here since Tuesday. They've been working diligently on this evacuation. Um, actually activating the planes and going hasn't been the step yet, but that's where I'm looking to to see an improvement in the, the registration and then um, hoping to get those planes going. All right. Well, if you hear anything back let us know. We'll be in further contact sure. if we can get that confirmed. We're looking to do that for sure. At this point, Mayor, how far away is the fire from Yellowknife? You know, the good news in it all was yesterday the fire didn't move as much as uh, anticipated. Um, the forecast was that it would be five kilometers closer to the community and it only moved one kilometer. That still puts it at about 16 kilometers from the community. So um, it is still coming. The winds aren't favorable in the fact that they're they are continuing to to push um from the west but um you know crews are working hard getting those fire breaks in in place so winds aren't helping um but overall for the moment is yellow knife do you consider the city safe yeah and that's what we wanted to when we issued the evacuation order yesterday was um recognizing that the 
the fire wasn't here yet. And so to be able to do the evacuation now um, was important and the highway was still open. And so the challenge of, challenge of course in all of this is we only have one road in and out. That's the road where the fire is located. So um, this fire has been burning for the past month. And so the highway has been open and closed multiple times due to too heavy of smoke or if the fire is getting too close. So we did want to take a look with um, the fire continuing to approach Yellowknife, looking at the weather forecast uh, to, to get that road evacuation going as soon as possible. Given that fact, people in the community knowing it would be congested if they had to leave, certainly we've heard from some people who've expressed to CBC News, Mayor Alty, that they wish that evacuation order had come sooner to get them as much time as possible to leave. Is that fair criticism? It's still a number of, of days to leave and, you know, whether we issue the evacuation order on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you were still going to have lineups of cars. We only have one highway. It's a one lane highway. You were naturally going to be bumper to bumper with folks. Um, so, you know, at the start of the week, we already had folks preemptively leaving, you know, the smoke was too much. The stress was too much. Folks decided they wanted to, to take their family elsewhere. Um, but yeah, once the evacuation order came out, that's where where the, the vehicles really started to, to line up and just continuing to encourage people to, to drive safely. It is um, congested. And if it's if vehicles are stopped, there's a reason don't pass people. Um, there's a reason that folks are stopped. What is your plan personally? Uh, I am part of the emergency management team, so we will be here, um, continue to monitor the situation. If anything were to change and and uh, we were at risk, we would do the, the full evacuation. All essential employees would be would be evacuated. Uh, but at this stage, it's it's not the case. So continuing um, here in Yellowknife with uh, all the other essential workers. And what's it like, if I might ask, here you are in the midst of this crisis and the city's never been through an evacuation or an incident of this magnitude. You're the person leading at this moment. What's the responsibility yeah. feel like? Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a big weight on the shoulders, pretty difficult situation, but, um, you know, staying calm, cool, collected, we've got to make good decisions. Um, I know... There's a million different opinions on should do this, should do that, should do that. Um, we pay folks to be those subject matter experts. They provide advice and you listen to that, take that, um, you know, push and lobby when when stuff looks like needs improvement. Um, but it's, you know, taking it one step at a time, one day, one challenge at a time.